This is a video of me doing a painting called Ancient Refuge, which is based on uh, Dover Castle and is available as a print at my website. You can see me just here. I've already uh, drawn in a lot of information and I'm just painting in the architectural structure a little bit more clearly. I'm painting it in boldly to make sure I don't lose the edges but when I put in a rough feel for the colours there's a long way to go with this painting um, I've reduced it down from uh, I don't know four or five hours maybe to 18 minutes I only work for about an hour at a time otherwise I start to lose concentration uh, it's important to have a break uh, give your mind a chance to rest and then come at it fresh again you can see uh, it's fairly a very rough start just to uh, get the basic, basic colours fed in and here I'm starting now to define a few bits of information I'm using a rigger brush you'll notice with the painting I only use two different brushes it's this rigger and I use a, a small half inch flat brush this is acrylic painting on board I've gessoed the board initially just drawn on it and then started painting with acrylic it's very much a uh, tonal painting this uh, the thing with acrylic of course is that, uh, that your tones do dry lighter and darker uh, it, it's not always uh, easy to, to judge what colour to paint something in because the, the darks often dry lighter and the lights often dry darker but here I'm still just uh, identifying some of the lighter areas and uh, getting some of the architectural information in but this is hours of painting reduced to 18 minutes uh, so I've had to really just pick odd elements really. And now scumbling in the sky with the half inch brush, maybe I use two different half inch brushes. Um, I think the other one is white handled. Uh, they're roughly the same, three quarter inch maybe. Um, but I don't fiddle around with too many different brushes and I, I, I find the rigor is just the smaller information a lot of which gets painted out is really just to tell me where things are um, here just getting some definition on the edges uh, I mean there'll be many other coats coming over this here now I'm, I'm just getting some colour into the roof of the church this is bringing in colour which isn't anywhere else in the painting so you'll see in a minute I sort of scuff it over uh, the other side of the painting just to uh, to, to balance up the colour feel of the picture um, you see I'm just getting it in there and rubbing it in just to, to give a little bit of harmony to the painting but there's a long long way to go yet and a lot of the things I do, I, I undo later on, and uh, I'm feeling my way, really. I've usually got music playing, um, usually classical music, something like Bach or something. Um, and uh, I try to work without thinking too hard. Uh, try to go with the flow of the music if I can, it, it relaxes me. And I, 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 you see me wiping out there um, too much information. I, I really don't want to get too picky on architectural information because it's, a, it's, it's not attractive on the eye. It's not what you see when you look at something quickly. You can't take in all information. If you put all information into a painting, it's much too tiring to look at. Here I'm redefining again the uh, edges because where you've got a contrast between light and dark, you, you really want that a strong edge, really. Um, yeah. But some of that will go again in a minute. But uh, there's a long way to go yet. 
This was painted a few years ago. I very rarely, well I never, apart from this, get round to videoing myself. Partly because I find it's an interruption. Um, I need to be completely free to paint. If I've got to think about switching on and off a video camera, it, it can be very disturbing. This painting was tending towards an illustration rather than a sort of loose... Uh, uh, rather than a loose painting and uh, so I could take a chance and, and try and organise some videoing. You'll notice when I get with this big red top that I've got as I get closer to the board the colours change. Now these, that's actually quite interesting. It's not something I hadn't picked up on myself. Obviously you're affecting the look of the painting by coming in. So in other words the painting will actually look colder when I finished because when you're looking at it, you haven't got a big red top glaring at it. Um, it's, it's food for thought. Here I'm defining the lighthouses um, on the entrance. This is the um, entrance that you come into with a small boat. And uh, in fact, a lot of this information has been achieved I put photographing it from the land looking out to sea and then because the lighthouse is the same all the way round. But I've had to, had to think about um, which side the light is and so on. You can see how useful the rigger is. I, I, it's, a, it's a good definition brush. Quite often I'll come in and scumble over it a little bit though just to rough it up so it's not too picky. Um, but a bit of contrast in light and dark is very important here to bring the foreground forward. Um, as I said, it's a tonal painting. If you don't get the high contrast on the, on the foreground, then the foreground will blend into the back. So now I'm, so now I'm starting to define the landscape a little picking out the uh, areas that are similar in uh, colour. I'm working from photographs, obviously I can't, <laughs> no way can you sit out on a boat, but I don't, I don't let the uh, photographs rule me too strongly. Defining the edge of the lighthouse here, just cutting back in with a darker um, colour. The darker it is behind that light lighthouse, the, the more it will stand out. But if it's too dark, of course, uh, it won't be in the distance. So there's a game to be played there. A lot of these areas will be picked out for the white cliffs later on, so uh, this why I'm just scumbling it in really getting a feel for the painting I'm looking at the whole painting when I'm doing the, any, any of these areas I, uh, I learn painting a specific area I'm keeping an eye on how everything looks related to the rest of the painting the white cliffs are just starting to come in now starting to be a little bit defined the broader brush areas You can see how here I painted the cliffs a little bit too white, but they'll, they'll darken off a little bit because it's acrylic. Um, but even so, maybe they're a little bit too bright compared to the lighthouse. It may just be the video actually, not uh, giving clear enough definition. It all works out in the end. <laughs> 
you can see how when you look at the castle at the top the, the little bit of darker definition around the back of the shadowy sides of the castle just helps it to look bold and, and powerful up there. The white cliffs are very much built up with stratas of chalk lines of chalk and uh, flint. So I'm just trying to use the brush horizontally here to, to, to give up, to produce that kind of structure. You see, I mean, the nice thing about acrylic, of course, is it only takes a few minutes to dry. So I can lean my side of my hand on sort of white fairly quickly um, and start working. Once again, you see, I'm putting in fairly dark there, but it'll probably dry lighter. Um, acrylics is a little bit difficult to judge, always. If it was oil, it would stay the same tone as you paint it in, which is helpful. Using the corner of the brush, really, it's surprising uh, how much detail you can put in with the, the edge and the corner of a square brush, of a flat brush. There's a deep shadow under those um, arches there. <coughs> There's so much information in this painting that a viewer doesn't want to be confused by too much detail. There's there's enough detail in the large, broad brush structure of it, really. It doesn't need fine detail. Nothing more uncomfortable to look at than too much detail in a painting. It looks as though I'm painting very rapidly. Well, I am. Uh, but I've been doing it a very long time and uh, I have a sort of uh, comfort with the brush it's not uh, it's something that I feel very comfortable with and I like to see things happening when you flick a brush across I like to see what happens I don't want everything to be too controlled. It's part of the excitement. If there's no excitement in the process of painting, then you're lost, really, you have no painting. With, with uh, oils, you would um, come in after the oils have dried and put a very thin, transparent coats of glazes over the top. Well, you can do the same thing with uh, acrylic. You can lighten or darken areas, warm them or cool them um, by putting in transparent layers. Uh, of course, you can do that very early on. There, there's a medium you, you can use to add to your paint to make it more transparent but some of the pigments are more transparent than others, so you have to choose the correct pig pigments. But that comes later. For example, the top area now is getting quite dark. I probably came in later and just glazed that very slightly with a, with a lighter um, layer.
taken me years to get round to editing this video to get it on the website. Um, been a lot of work. I hope it's helpful for someone. Certainly interesting for me to watch myself painting. Um, Right, so we're attacking the sea now, trying to get a bit of harmony between the colours in the sea and the cliff. Of course they'll be sort of reflected, the, the cliffs are rather a long way away, but the, you, to get harmony with the painting you do want to tie up the colours, although I quite like those warm colours that were in the sea early on. Now using the edge of the brush to get a bit of darker tone in and a bit more detail. At the end of the video, I'll put in a long still of the finished painting. Obviously, you don't always get things right. I don't like those dark lines in the harbour, so... Out they come. I'm just warming up the area further back there, making it a little bit more silty because this sand and silt in the water, especially when it's being blown up. The the brush I'm using there is a very old brush and it's completely knackered really, it's, uh, but it breaks up nicely and does nice flicks and things. Still using the big brush to get some detail in. Using high contrast, getting, I mean, it, it, that's what happens anyway, is your waves are right next to the dark um, pier there, but it's very fortuitous and it does help to bring the foreground forward. If it wasn't there, I'd do it anyway. Here I'm using the other end of the brush to put some scraffito in whilst the paint is still wet. Can't see it much on the video, but it uh, just adds a bit of texture to the painting. Once again in the harbour, I'm doing the same thing. That's why I get a lot of paint on the back of my hand there. Because I keep swapping the paintbrush around backwards and forwards. The rigger again, now getting a bit of detail in. Trying to be careful not to put too much in. We'll get eliminating some sometimes with the square brush. Well, that's only part of the process, but it gives you an idea. The finished painting is uh, a lot more work has been done, uh, particularly concentrated on the tonal distance between uh, the foreground and the background. Um, I didn't talk about warm and cold colours as as the distance comes in, of course the tent colours tend to be colder, but uh, I cheat sometimes. Okay, hope you've enjoyed that, I hope that's been really helpful for someone. Thank you. If you made it to the end, well done.